hello and welcome back and today we are looking at the brand new QNAP QTS version 5 beta. This is the brand new version of their software and services, kind of the user operating system um, of your QNAP NAS. It's currently in beta, it's going to be in beta for about a month and a number of you are wondering about whether it's worth your time. What are the upgrades, what are the downgrades, what is new, what isn't and ultimately should you upgrade. But I will highlight a few disclaimers straight off the bat. First and foremost, QTS 5.0 is obviously a beta so if you do upgrade to it don't put your data at risk make sure you're either going to test this out as a virtual QTS using virtualization station uh, built into your NAS or you can go ahead and make sure you get everything backed up but downgrading firmware although it's possible it's by no means that straightforward uh, second thing I will highlight throughout the course of this video is a lot of the features of QTS 5.0 I am unable to effectively show you in this video are either because they're to do with the back end kernel of the system uh, with improvements in sockets and stuff like that to make it all running uh, gradual, smoother and more reactive. But also there's some features and functionality that I just can't show you because I don't have the setup such as QUFTP, something I will talk about later in the video. And of course, some of the improvements there with the VPN. I've got some dedicated VPN content on the back burner still to come and I haven't got WireGuard on there but I've added it on for the video coming soon but as I mentioned some of the features that I'm going to talk through just here in the opening from their own official page uh, I'm just going to touch on real quick we are going to talk about the user interface of course we are going to talk about notifications we are going to talk about the menus and obviously after that we're going to talk about some of the security settings some of the upgrades some of the changes and VPN stuff we're going to touch on in another video. Uh, NVMe SSD caching, something we are going to touch on in the full version rather than the beta. I don't want to go into too much detail on the NVMe caching um, on this beta version right now because um, I will be comparing the full release of QTS 5 against DSM 7 in the near future and I have a whole dedicated video using the TPU. Unfortunately at the moment you can only take advantage of Google's new TPU, the little M2 Coral. You can only really use it on QMaggy on the QNAP but the hope is soon you'll be able to take advantage of it in some of the surveillance AI recognition stuff meaning that you won't need uh, such an aggressive QNAP NAS in order to take advantage of AI recognition and more. And again, these things are dirt cheap. You can pick these up for about 20 or 30 quid right now. Uh, the USB one, a little bit more, but and it is an external connection. So if you don't have an M2 available slot on your QNAP, you can go ahead with a USB. And we will, of course, look at uh, Drive Analyzer as well. We can look at it very briefly in today's video, but I am going to do a dedicated video on this. We're just building up some historical data on some different NAS systems in order to show you that in greater detail later. And the QFTP stuff is a lot of that is to do with QNAP's own new file transfer protocol application for managing a lot of the back and forth of data transmission between other servers, other service providers and more as smooth and secure as possible. But as mentioned, you can download it, but the period and the period uh, for the beta testing ends July 31st. And of course, you can report a lot of those issues that you may come across throughout its utilization throughout. But let's go straight into the beta itself. Now, the desktop interface here, I'm going to straight away say uh, one thing I like and one thing I don't like straight off the bat. First thing I do like is it is lovely and crisp. If we look at um, QTS, uh, this is a version 4.5.3. Um, running on an Intel based NAS. This is what it looks like and this is how it compares with the newer version and I think yes of course we could change the background there if we make our way into uh, the background options. If we go into the options menu there we could change the background and change the wallpaper very very quickly. Let's go for something like nice and blue there. It's relatively uh, similar in terms of some of the color spectrum there but it has to be said it's a lot bolder, stands out a lot more, it's a lot more crisp as well those um, little apps there and the other thing I'll highlight and this is something I'm less keen on uh, right now while looking at this window let's go into the zoom we're using Chrome and that is what it looks like at 80% zoom okay now we're going to look at 80% zoom on QTS 5 didn't mean to open that switch to 80% and I don't know about you guys but as clear as I like these things to be those buttons are almost too big for me and I'm not trying to boast and say my eyesight's so so good but for me I'm less keen on how um, 
big those icons are. Also, when I've done the zoom protocol there, the icons there at the bottom haven't fully displayed because they've been displayed at that original resolution at 75 there at the bottom. And again, if we switch that to 75, look at the difference there between them. Those icons are a lot smaller, and of course, very few people use you know less than 80% zoom. But still, those icons, you have to get to about 75% zoom till these look normal size to me. But again, that's more of a personal preference. Um, above and beyond that, I have noticed uh, an increase in responsiveness, both in the back end and in the front end of this system. While I was installing multiple applications for this testing, I would say that the way the apps responded and multiple windows on screen did seem a little tighter there in the background. And again, I installed a lot of applications. There's not a vast number of new apps that have been built into QTS 5. Um, QBoost um, is not is no longer a default app at launch. I have uh, migrated over from a 4.5.3 setup. Um, the security settings, as mentioned in the earlier waves um, earlier on, have been improved. And again, I will talk about this side menu first, though. The way you go into the menu there, it's a lot faster. Um, I'm not sure about the size of it. It feels a lot more like Windows there. This is how it looked on the side panel before. And again, at this 80% zoom threshold, that is near enough unreadable. So if we go in there and go to 100% and we open up the side menu, it's a little clearer, still takes up there. But if we go to 100% zoom here on QTS 5, to me, 100% zoom there, those icons are massive. And if we look at the original screenshots being shown by QNAP here, that's kind of the 100% view. So I find these icons just a little bit too big there for me. If we go into the side menu, that's pretty large. It's, again, comparable to that of Windows 10. So I'm less keen on that big menu there. I'd be interested to hear everyone's feedback there. Again, it's crystal clear. Cannot question the clarity of those icons, but it's still quite large at 100% there. And again, tapping through, we go back to the previous version of QTS 4.5. I've grown to love this user interface. I know it's not for everyone. I know a lot of people out there, when they look at um, Synology, for example, I've just come off the back of doing uh, a video using um, uh, DSM and QTS 4.5. Uh, sorry, uh, um, uh, DSM 6.2 and DSM 7, their upgrade towards DSM 7 um, kind of kept a lot of the staple framework. And I think what's happening here is in QTS uh, 5, things have been made a lot clearer by making them bigger. But I think sometimes you want that space on screen. But again, I'm laboring this point here. Let's move on. Next, I want to touch on one of the other new features, of course, Drive Analyzer, something that was uh, originally previewed right, um, right the way back in 2019. It was a very early reveal there. Uh, it is available on QTS 4.5, but on QTS 5, we can see here Drive Analyzer has been really pushed into a lot of their marketing there. Now, Drive Analyzer, for those that aren't aware, is a tool, sorry, just accidentally clicking that one at the bottom. Do you know what? I'm definitely going to get rid of this zoom. Let's bring that back up to 75 so we can actually see what we're doing. Um, the Drive Analyzer tool there, I will highlight, um, is a tool that I think serves a great deal better outside of the NAS from within. When you do set it up, you need to have a license to do it. It is still in beta right now, so you can test it out, as you can see there. And the Drive Prediction isn't just about drive analysis. There's lots of different tools that are built into your QNAP NAS for monitoring you know, your system with regard to the storage manager. That can give you a lot of real-time information about your drives. You can find out a lot of health information. You can run all your checks individually on the RAID arrays, on the storage pool. You can do scrubbing. You can do checks all the way through. Where drive analysis comes in is predicting drive failure. So what that means is that if one of your drives is starting to display um, some of the warning signs that it's going to fail eventually, this is where Drive Analyzer will step in. It will notify you that a drive is showing some of those telltale signs, things that wouldn't typically show up in a smart test and that allow you to introduce a hot spare into your system and instigate a RAID um, changeover of those drives. Now again, this is something that works better once you introduce the third-party services from ULINK DA. So if you go head to their website, we've got it set up here. 
And again, I'm going to run this for a little bit longer on all of these individual systems. This gives you quite a lot of information about individual drives. So not only the drives that are in individual systems, you can see here, I've got um, two drives inside the QHORA, not the QHORA, the QMIRO um, router and mesh uh, and NAS system built into there. We can find out information about the drives. If we go into the system we're using here, this has got four drives all built in. We can go into quite a lot of uh, detail about these drives. We can look at individual drives. It'll tell you if they're empty. At the moment, AI analysis, this hasn't ran for long enough to give us that. So I'm going to come back to this in a few days. Um, but again, you can find out a lot of information about the drives over time. You know, real-time information about the drives, heat, foul, block count, that sort of thing. And if drives have demonstrated um, fail information or even slightly wobbly information, they'll be sent to you as email reports directly from Drive Analyzer to you. And although some of the information is more readily available, let's get rid of that older NAS there, some of the information is readily available here in the window, I do think the bulk of the more useful information is far, far, far more prevalent there in the outside window. You can produce those cloud reports as well that will be done there on screen, but it still needs more time to come up with more real-time information. This is really just a small portal view of what we saw in that other tab. And as you can see, uh, data analysis still needs more time to complete. So we'll be coming back to this for a video next week for you guys. But the drive analysis tool, I understand if it's using third-party services why it would be paid for uh, and it would need a subscription when it's no longer in beta. But I still wish it was kind of like uh, a lot of the camera licenses and stuff like that where you've got maybe f one license for free or drive analysis on one storage ball or one volume array. But again, it's too early to say about the effectiveness of this. And if they can introduce a system whereby drive analysis, if you have a hot spare in place in your storage area, because I have got one hot spare here, what we're going to be utilizing for our drive analysis video what I'm hoping is when we look at that drive analysis stuff that later down the line when the system's out of beta that it will automatically trigger one of these drives to start cloning the drive that's starting to show uh, irregularities in hardware and ultimately completely navigate any RAID rebuild time by cloning the drive and then dismounting the storage ball briefly, introducing the new drive, removing the old one and uh, rebooting from there. That said, a lot of the big, big, big popular features of um, QTS are still prevalent in QTS 5. And that's where I was going earlier on when a lot of people have described Windows 11 as Windows 10 Plus or Windows 10 with a few extra bits and bobs, more of a, uh, a firmware update than a whole new version. That's sort of how I'm feeling about QTS 5. I think QTS 5 has done a lot of stuff in the background that isn't immediately apparent. A lot of it is very, very, very welcome in terms of responsiveness on the apps and the fluidity and latency from within the web browser are certainly improved. But I will say that there are some times where the design um, of some uh, individual windows and stuff along the way still looks like the previous version. Like I think there's a little conflict there in terms of design between the user interface uh, the main desktop there and some of those side options and how things look from within individual windows when you open them. I mean, again, you go into the app center and there's the old aesthetic, the old design. And I say old, I by old, of course, mean current design. But still, I think a lot of these could stand to be upgraded alongside the slick design. Otherwise, it leads to a slight uh, kind of visual conflict there. I will argue that some of the security improvements in QTS 5 and probably a lot of these do carry over from QTS 4.5 are still very very tight. QNAP have had to learn a few lessons recently about security I think and some of them have definitely been taken to heart. Lots of stuff where right now I am utilizing the admin account on this system uh, something I shouldn't really do and I don't recommend and I know QNAP are in the process now of disabling um, just root uh, we're well, not disabling the admin account, but allowing admin, but typical use of the admin account is heavily discouraged. And again, with improvements in SSD keys there, if we zoom straight in, we can see that you can now 
um, adapt and use customized SSH connectivity. There's obviously um, highlighting regularly the utilization of two-step verification on your system. And if we make our way into some of the improved um, Q log areas, there's a lot more statistical information and stuff presented to you about what's happening with your device in real time. And again, a lot of this information is readily available there on um, QTS 4.5. But I think this is one of the areas where the designs had a little bit of a kick up the bum and look a little bit better. And Security Council, of course, all of these services are all pretty much rolled in there. Something you can do on your QNAP now. So a lot of the security upgrades, a lot of the tightening of things there in the background. Some of them aren't just in the background. They are foreground based. A lot of recommendations as well on those file processes and definitely the access. But there's still areas where I think the design and aesthetic there's a little bit of conflict there between 4.5 and 5. Sorry to be a broken record. But I'm going to wrap things up there because this is still a beta. I can tell you that most of these applications still run absolutely fine. And we will be running individual tests on some of these key things. Obviously, Drive Analyzer being right there at the front of the queue. And we may have a little bit of experimentation with that brand new QUFTP with a few NASs in my network environment. Just to see how they communicate and maybe bench testing some of that security with packets of data back and forth. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, we're not going to show, not sure how long this beat is going to run. Hopefully, we'll see a full version so we can do some real in depth stuff on this in August. And of course, how this compares against DSM 7 is going to be big for a number of you out there to see how these brands are moving things forward in 2021 and 2022. If you enjoyed the video, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. And I shall see you next time.